It's been 10 years since we started the Craft Beer Channel. It's gone from a hobby, to a side hustle, to a full-time job thanks to the support of over 150,000 subscribers and most importantly 400 wonderful Patreons. We aren't done yet, but in the last decade we've travelled all over the world, from Norway's Arctic Circle, to China's Oktoberfest, from the west coast of America, to sunny Barcelona. We've met food royalty, actual royalty, and of course, brewing royalty, while making three feature-length documentaries and winning several awards for our filmmaking. <laughs> it hasn't all been smooth sailing, far from it, but as well as the beers we've tasted and brewed and the places we've been, we'll always remember the incredible people we've met. To thank them, as well as our viewers, subscribers and Patreons, we decided to host a 10-year anniversary festival and brew a few collaboration beers to serve there. What started as four beers snowballed to become ten, one for each year we've been making films. Which means for the last four months we've been travelling all over the UK and even Sweden to brew exciting beers with some of the inspirational friends we've made along the way. We've made everything from traditional German Fest beers to British Hop Golden Ales, through piney West Coast IPAs to heavily fruited Berliner Weisses, and of course a big juicy New England IPA and one monster coffee Imperial Stout. This is the story of just one of those brew days. Hey gang, welcome to the Craft Beer Channel. Today we're brewing at one of the OG London craft breweries. And it's an absolute peach of a day down here in Hackney today, Johnny. Walthamstow. We're in Walthamstow. Oh. But I can see why you could say that, because we are at Hackney Brewery and we're going to be brewing a beer style that has come to define this amazing place. It's a sour and ours is going to be based off of a classic dessert. Oh. You'll be hard pushed to find nicer, more hardworking people in the craft beer industry than the folk at Hackney Brewery. You'll also find it hard to find a brewery making better, more consistent and determinedly drinkable session beer, a philosophy they've stuck to for well over a decade, even as they've grown and rebranded. Within that, they've become best known for their Millions range, a seasonal rotation of fruited sour beers inspired by cocktails, desserts and whatever matches the time of year. Their core sour Millions of Peaches is a blend of peach and basil on a crisp wheat beer base and happens to be one of my favourite British sours. So when we decided to host our festival at their brewery taproom, we jumped at the chance to brew a twist on it. After a long back and forth about what we could do to bring something new to the recipe, I thought the addition of raspberry could create a peach melba vibe, a summery dessert that matches John's sunny disposition. <laughs> He set us straight to work mashing in with him with the promise of beer and fruit puree tastings to come. So John, I think you hold the record for the longest time between Craft Beer Channel meeting and being aware of a brewery and finally doing a video. Because we met and I loved your beers in probably 2012-ish. Right back when we started the channel in 2013. Such a tease, okay. Johnny. You near, we, we, you had, was it a gold nail and American pale in bottle? 500 yeah. mil bottles, yeah. this is how long ago it was, um, but we never actually got you on the channel. So I guess I, I'll start with an apology. You make well, wonderful I, beer and you should have been on the channel earlier. Well, I think you're ready. Yeah. Um, tell us about the, uh, the, the start of Hackney, because it was just before the, the real boom, right? Yeah. It seems so everybody started in 2013, including 2011 ourselves. 2011 was when we set up, yeah, like you said, we started with a core range of a best bitter, a golden ale, and an interpretation of an American pale ale. It was a bit dark, I remember. It was dark. It was from the homebrew days, yeah. when me and Pete were homebrewing, we took that recipe and just started brewing that. In, it was from Zena Chef's How to Brew right. Classic Styles, and like one of, that was an AP, and we, we used that, but yeah, the conversions weren't quite done right, and I think that over time we've, we phased it out and replaced it with well, Kapow is actually a direct descendant of, of the original APA. Oh, wait, so, so there is a lineage. Yeah, we tend not to bin beers. So there's a big American kind of inspiration on, on the taproom and also on your yeah. beers, which we'll, we'll dig into in a bit. But something that I, when people, like when we've been talking about the festival, when we've been talking mm. about this collab, lots of people haven't heard of Hackney from like around the rest of the UK. And so I found myself describing what Hackney yeah. do 
And I've always said, you know, it's very much American inspired, but absolutely everything you make, except for maybe this one, uh, yeah. is, is paintable. So you've taken yeah. this American approach of like big flavor, big hopping aromas, mm. but everything you do is, you know, drier than your classic sort of New England style. But I wouldn't regard what you yeah. make as New England. It's very much no. based on an th- English approach as I well. I think we try and merge the two very traditional English because, you know, that's where we are. That's kind of where all of our ingredients are mostly sourced from the hops, obviously. Um, we tend to use that as a building block for those big American flavors where, but yeah, sessionable. So we, we have, I think well, lowest is 3% or the way up to five and a half is, is core. That's what you get. Specials sometimes go as high as six and a half if yeah. we're pushing the boat out. But Which is wild in a market where you know, yeah. niche high quality craft beer such as you make is you know, it's the eight percent beers that yeah. typically people talk about and and tend to gravitate to towards. And you have you ever done like a double IPA? We did one. It was okay. Yeah. It was so, like so that. you're a hot focus brewery that's never done a dipper, which is yeah. pretty unique. <laughs> I think with the brewing that kind of style on on the equipment that we have is is, is one of the reasons why we've not done it. I think the, the efficiencies and as you know, we're, as much as I love my brew kit, it is big pots and pans. Mm-hmm. So all of our beers, the lineage goes back, like you started, we were saying earlier, to, to 12 years ago. Yeah. And, though, and we can trace it back pretty comfortably. Even specials we do now, so we've got another special coming out next week that is based off of another special that was based off another special. It was, but so we constantly So they all eventually and, come back to the London beer market of 2012 of like four yeah. to five and five percent American hopped. Even things like when, beer. when we're introducing Mysterious Spectre, that, that's got lineage back to like small little collab brews that we were doing, I don't know, seven years ago. Mm. That's kind of, we don't just rush to put stuff in the core range. And, and also the stuff that is in the core range hasn't stopped changing. It gets tweaked, it gets slightly different. Because everything changes. Malt changes from year to year, hops change from year to year. So we have to constantly change stuff to keep it consistent, keep the flavors as as good as they can be, but also push it in a different direction. Well, we've talked a lot about hoppy beer, but actually one of the things you're most perhaps famous for is, is the session sours. Yeah. Should we have a little taste of millions of peaches and you can tell us where- Sure. Where the-, the, the Quick sour love came from our old head brewer, uh, Darren. He was big into his sours, and I wasn't too. I didn't really know much about them, um, and he was like, "I'm going to make a sour." We had a project where it was called the Stooge Project, where we'd do a batch of beer and split it into three, and then mess with each of the three bits. So I think this was a part of the project where it, it was um, a dry hopped sour, um, a goes and then a uh, peach and basil. And he was, it was from a cocktail that he had one night out, right. peach and basil cocktail. And he was like, this combination is going to be great. It was. Yeah, I mean, it's, and, it's uh, beautiful. It's like, yeah, really, really peachy, yeah. but floral as well from that basil. It's just a lovely combination. Um, and I remember having this for the first time. And, and back then, sours were very much like raspberry Berliner Weiss. Mm. Yeah or whatever, whatever other fruit. And we've started to play a lot more as an industry, I think with, with herbs and stuff to be a bit more culinary yeah. about our approach, particularly to sours, which are quite a culinary approach to beer. Yeah, we wanted um, a very accessible sour because this isn't going to be in the core range. We were like, okay, so the melt your face sours that just, they're, unless you kind of ease yourself into them, you don't expect it can be a bit of a shock to certain people's <laughs> systems. Yeah. So we based it, it was, I think it was Cal- Siren's Calypso was what some of the first sours that I was kind of getting really into. And then we, that kind of sourness that was just pleasant. I think it was like a nice warm summer day and me and, me and, my, me and my mate were just having pints of Calypso mm-hmm. and we were like, this is lovely. And that was a dry hop sour as well, which was pretty yeah. unusual back then as well. So yeah, yeah, yeah. And, yeah. Uh, that was a proper influence on how this has developed and then so yeah again this from from that original project to this completely different beers mm-hmm. but, but you know over time it just changes little by little by little even the, the amount of peaches we put in it's changed so it's gone up because people go 
Oh, I was not the peaches before. I think when we were doing the annual, we had to keep up in the peaches, <laughs> just because like the, oh, it's not as peaches as I remember last year. It was it's the same. <laughs> you got like the nuclear fact, threshold shift, more... but for peaches. Yeah, yeah. yeah so there was definitely. You do millions of peaches, but then you also do billions of peaches. Yeah. So essentially, they're the same beer. Yeah. So uh, same grist, but just half the water. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Right. <laughs> Yeah, that works. So we didn't, we don't sparge it. We just run, pretty much run, run off first runnings a little yeah. bit just to wash out those sugars. But um, yeah. What sort That's of percentage are you getting up to? Eight, eight, eight. on the yes, eight. So four for million, four for millions, eight for billions, twelve for trillions. I don't know. Yeah, yeah well. I'd... <laughs> Um, but yeah, so when we wanted to do a collab together, I, I thought, you know, we could do another hoppy beer, but we've got lots of great hoppy makers yeah. uh, on our list of ten breweries, uh, but not many great sour makers. So we've got two sours actually of the ten, and obviously with you guys we wanted to do a session one. Yeah. So we started talking about what we could possibly throw in there. Lots of things were mooted, including coconut. <laughs> but we, <laughs> but we've, we've we've settled on something that, that feels very, very hackney in that it's a dessert, a food la food inspired. Yeah. Uh, flavor sour, inspired. Flavor inspired. Uh, Melba. Yeah. So raspberries. We were talking to you guys about. What kind of fruits? My favourite fruit would be lead, raspberries, yeah. and uh, and we were going around the houses, weren't we, about what to pair it with? So generally, we kind of pair a, a pairing. So, so this is peach and basil. We've done um, cherries and thyme. We've done uh, uh, blackberries and blueberries, raspberries and. Uh, Cherries, I think it was, was the other one. So is that trying to find sort of so, depth and complexity in a very yeah. simple beer rather than just be like, this is strawberry. Because, because Philly yeast is quite, uh, it's, it's quite one dimensional in terms of sours. Mm -hmm. So, and the base is kind of lager malt or pilsner malt with um, some wheat for a bit of body because lower pH tends, tends to stop head retention and, and kind of thin your beer out a touch. So it's all very clean it's a very clean ferment it's a very clean sour uh and so you the depth comes from the additions that's why we we, we you know we're dry hopping yeah maybe i don't i don't see this series as being like a hop led thing it's more of like a fruit herb it's those kind of pairings of flavors that that drive these things and uh peach and raspberry seem like a logical Mm -hmm. Root into something a bit different. So we've done uh, lemon and raspberry uh, at the start of the summer. That was um, pink lemonade inspired. Nice. Just like sharp and kind of like a nice soft fruited finish. That was, that was significantly sour than, than this because obviously lemons sour. Yes. And uh, raspberries have a slight tartness to them. Yeah. Uh, so, so we're shooting for, I guess, a similar pH beer wise, but then we are going to have raspberry yeah. bringing it. Even if it's not literal it pH, it's the presentation of it as well. You know? Yeah. Like, particularly like English raspberries in season have a big whack of acidity yeah. to them, and we. So we so this will that'll be like a day five edition. So the first couple of days pH will drop, and then the ferment will happen. And while it's still active ferment, we'll we'll put the fruit in. And then maybe another five days after that, we'll taste it and see if it needs the pH needs adjusting. Just because we want to make sure that it is got a bit of a tang to it but not too much yeah I think it's, that's it's, the, uh, it's striking that balance between yeah crushability and intense exciting yeah slap in the face of raspberry yeah. just and accessible i think that's the key to the to, to our beers is that we don't want someone to be like no it's too much mm -hmm. right well i'm aware uh we've got a mash tun to dig out and also i'm hoping we can we can sample some of the purees yes, that have been going we'll into this beer so let, let, let's check that nothing's gone wrong and uh, then have some smoothies. As expected, everything had gone to plan with the mash and the beer was coming up to the boil. So we did some slow motion mash digging for the camera. Well, to be fair, we did a lot more than that, while John dug out the purees that will be added to the beer in just a few days. So these are the purees. Yeah, we have raspberry and peach. Yep. They already look like beers, <laughs> according to some breweries. We're not going to go uh, that quite thick, that extreme. Um, quite, 
combustible if fermented. That's right. The, uh, right. That's always the issue, isn't okay. it? Okay, <laughs> right, yes, exactly, yeah. Uh, so we've got, yeah, raspberry, we've got about 200 kilos going in to ferment for that, and then a peach is about 100 kilos of that. And we'll probably put some peach extract in as well. Right, okay. And why, why what, does that, the extract sort of really help the aroma? Or? Yeah, because when peach flavor is quite delicate, it's quite um, volatile. So, because right. we add these still during fermentation, it loses a little bit. So, we just right. get some natural extract. Literally sort of fermenting just out. To top it up. Some it's of the, the same, flavor. It's the same way as kind of like putting hops in the boil and then hop, dry hopping. So, you, you right. lose a lot of the volatiles during fermentation. So, you top it up at the end. Right, okay. Okay. Is can I, can of, I have a taste? Of course. Uh, I'm just going to drink it. Do it. Raspberries. So, is it, so this is like <laughs> raspberry. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to give you tasting notes on this. <laughs> um, is, is, is there any sugar added or is it just like no. it's pure fruit? It's pure fruit, pure fruit pasteurized and. Pastur blended, pasteurized, right. strained. Um, well, even now it's probably not that strained. It's de seeded, I believe. Right, yeah. Okay. You can see there's sort of genuine yeah, it's, fruit in that. It's lumpy. It's. it's it's lumpy is another it's way. It's with bits. Yeah. So yeah, like this is going to contribute sugar, but you're not really tasting it. It's very... It will ferment. Very tough. So yeah, yeah, yeah. it might eat. So this is going back to the whole body of the recipe is we put a lot of wheat in to kind of bring the body up because every every aspect of this will thin it out at yeah. some point. And yeah, yeah. Um, especially when you add fruit, those fermentable sugars will thin out your beer. Um, but then, yeah. So yeah, peaches, it's again, pureed from fresh peaches. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, God, that's delicious. Tastes like peaches. She just buy this from the supplier just, <laughs> just to drink, really. Um, yeah, I mean that's much sweeter, much less acidity. Yeah. So raspberry's going to bring so acidity and freshness. So it's going to drop the pH down a little bit. So yeah, this yeah. is why where we're aiming for like three two for the base. By the time we add the fruit in, it will drop the pH and continue fermenting. So the alcohol is quite bitter. So we're balancing that: the bitterness, the sweetness, the fruit. That's unfermented. I'm sure there's stuff that won't ferment in this as well. Yep. So it will kind of end with a balanced. You, yeah, go for it. Doing a. Is that about the right blend? A bit, bit more, maybe. A bit more peach? Yeah. The glasses taper off a bit. You've probably got a more high tech way of. <laughs> no, we've just got a bigger vessel. Just, just a bigger vessel. Same, same thing. And you're still shaking it with your hands. Yeah, oh, absolutely. <laughs> so this, this should smell like Melba. Bit more peaches? No, I think I got it okay. right. Okay. okay, it's amazing how immediately, as soon as you blend those two things, it reminds you of like an ice creamy uh, Melbury. Oh, yeah. I think Smell. it's just an association Smells. of it. Yeah. Yeah, that's reassuring. So, how much beer to fruit are we going to be doing? Good question. Probably, uh, so it turns out there's 15% fruit. All right. Maybe a bit more. Philly sour does leave a quite tropical, fruity yeah, yeah, esters anyway. Yeah. So you're just topping it all up. Yeah. To, and you to you don't want it to tip over into just fruit. Just fruit. It's still got to taste Fruity like a style. beer. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Which your peach and basil one definitely has. It has yeah. this kind of, like there is lager malt character to it and mm. there's the Philly tropicalness as well. Yeah, you yeah. want to taste the grain a little bit as well. Yeah, so just exactly. balance yeah. it all out. All right, so I'm very excited having tasted that. It's already Melbury. Yes. Um, and it's, uh, we're about to transfer into this tank. Yeah. Start the fermentation process. And what, you said five or six days into fermentation. Five or six days, in. we'll add all the fruit. And then another five days, maybe six days, we'll transfer it and then get it ready for packaging. Wow. So it's a quick process. Even yeah, though you're not using around. the quick sour process, it's even quicker. So we yeah. quicker sour. So in tank, probably two weeks. Yeah, wow. Maybe you know, a bit longer than two weeks. Amazing. Two and a half weeks. That's good because the festival is coming up. Yeah. And because I really want to try it. We then added the small hop addition there to prevent infection as much as add any flavour or aroma and settled in for another can of millions of peaches and some more philosophical chat courtesy of Brian. What would you say are the most important lessons you've learned from the 12 years that you've been going as hack? From what I've learned over the past 12 years is that don't rush. Don't rush stuff. I think it's, if you're gonna put something out, make it as, as best as you can to your abilities. To, uh, that's it, Res live, like, live within your means. It's like brew within your means. Yes. Because we haven't got fancy equipment. And to be able to do those methods, like, like you say, whirlpools and things like that, we, we have to think out of the box a little bit how we get those results without the equipment. 
don't just I think when the when we first started in the on the old site we had like 12 maybe fermenters at one point and they were all different and they were all making all kinds of things and it was it was a different market back then I think we were doing a lot of cask and they want new exciting different and that's when we learned to kind of rein it back in and really focus on a set amount of products and a set amount of styles that work really well and then spend the next 10 years refining them. Hackney have come a long way, but they've taken their time over it and held fast to their philosophy that beer should be aromatic, pintable and approachable. Three words that exactly sum up what we thought of our collab. So we always champion the idea of drinking a beer where it's made, and that's what we're doing. We are here at the venue that our festival will be happening in two days' time. We've just been packing the goodie bags. Or oh, it'll be... It was weeks. two days' time. Yeah, weeks this come out like a month before. ago. <laughs> That's confusing. <laughs> yes. Um, but we are here drinking our collab, Millions of Melba, which was a raspberry yeah. and peach sour. With Hackney. With Hackney Brewery, in case yeah. that wasn't clear. Um, so this one... Do you remember when we were tasting the, the fruit purees? I always struggle with that. The fruit sure do. purees. We were worried the peach might not quite sing through with all the raspberries. So we added more peach puree. So that's what we're looking for here. Did the peach come through? I love Is the, the colour of it, bringing more acidity? It's a lovely blush that. pink, isn't it? It's like an orangey very pink. Nice. Yeah, orangey pink. Yeah, you're it's right. orangey pink. Yellow and red. We've ended that up is orange. a very unusual colour for yeah. a beer. It and I nice, love it. Nicely with our glassware. It does, sure does. Um, right. Wow, I'm getting lots of raspberry there's off that. Millions of peach. <laughs> right, you're getting loads of raspberry. I was about to say millions of peach. I mean, there's a hell of a lot of peach going on. They're both there, which they was are. which was my worry. They are both definitely there's there. There's like the jamminess of raspberry, yeah. I think, right? And then there's yeah. the sort of I don't know what what I don't know what peach, the stone fruitiness of peach. Stone fruitiness. And then what I love in a fruited tower, like that little kind of yogurty lactic character. It doesn't smell too sharp and acidic, no. it's got a nice rounded yogurty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's not like kind of totally cracker. mental no. where you, it's gonna like burn your nasal. No, it smells very, very rounded and balanced, and I'm very mm. excited. I wanna move in. Delicious, summery, fresh, zingy. It's making me do dolphin noises. Dolphin really. noises from it's, Bradley. It's hitting all everywhere up in my Every mouth. Every part of your tongue, roof of your great. mouth. I mean, I, I love the sours that Hackney do, and that's why we did this with them because. It's very rounded. It's got decent acidity, but they build in body and sweetness um, and texture and real jammy fruitiness to make it not feel too sour. I'm not one of those people that goes like, oh, it's not sour enough. I'm like, generally it's like, oh, that's too sour. But this is not, this is bang on. That's perfect summer drinking. Yeah. yeah. We're having an Indian summer right now, Johnny. We are, and this is what, like, if this had been a wet day for the festival, it might not have gone down so well, but it's due to be sunny. It's due to be sunny and this is going to be very popular. It's beautiful. It is. An incredibly, incredibly refreshing beer. Uh, it's massively crushable, Johnny. What percentage is this? This is like... Oh, it was way down 4%. Four. I mean, that is sessionable yeah. big time, right? Yeah, absolutely stunning. Millions of Melba. Melba for me. Millions of Melba. Melba for free. Not free. Do you know what? I don't think we're going to get demonetized for that rendition. I think we'll be okay. What? Yeah. That was spot on. 